So Oregon's schedule allows for the realistic possibility of going 12-0, and which has only happened one single solitary time. That was back in 2010 when Oregon was in the Pac-12. And I'll explain more in just a moment. But for those who don't have Oregon's schedule memorized, like myself, I think I could do it off the top of my head, but I've got it right in front of me just in case. Idaho is game one, August 31st. Do you realize how close that is? We're, we're, we're in the end of July, August 31st, game one, Autzen Stadium, Idaho. That's a win. A game on Big Ten Network. Okay. Week two, at home, Boise State, preseason Mountain West favorites, and a perennial thorn in Oregon side at Autzen Stadium. That game's on Peacock, by the way. And then you follow with Oregon State, who Oregon blasted 31-7 to at Autzen last year. They go to Risa, where they haven't won in six years granted they only play there every other year of course but zero and two in their last two trips to research stadium should have won both those games did not this one though is going to have a more sizable roster difference because oregon state lost a lot their head coach quarterback running backs offensive they they lost it all they've replaced it okay Ducks will be a big favorite that game on uh, fox looks like they're a 20 and a half point favorite according to uh espn so then you get into Big Ten play, and a classic Big Ten matchup, Oregon at UCLA, hosts Michigan State, then the Ohio State game, which is in Eugene, then they go at Purdue, classic trap game, host Illinois, at Michigan, Maryland at home, at Wisconsin, by and then host Washington. Now, one of the reasons that I got to thinking about whether Oregon could go 12-0 and is how close was Oregon to going undefeated a year ago in the regular season? Everyone just kind of remembers what happened at the end of the year and how much the losses stood out because Oregon didn't win the national championship. How close were they, really, to going undefeated? The answer is intensely close. Perhaps, arguably, a missed field goal away. If Oregon completes that drive and the field goal goes through and they go to overtime, who would you rather be? Because think about it if the shoe was on the other foot. If Oregon had gone down and taken the lead with under two minutes to go and Washington had gone down and tied the game and sent it to overtime, whether you're at home or on the road, which team do you want to be? Who do you who, who feels better going into overtime there? Again, doesn't guarantee anything. But we all remember the decisions in that game, not kicking a field goal on a couple different red zone trips, not executing well, couldn't get it right, all those sorts of things. It was that close. And that's the only real game where Oregon faced a major threat. I mean, you go up and down their schedule. Texas Tech was a major threat as well early in the season on the road. But then Oregon kind of breezed through most of the rest of their schedule. Colorado, yeah, that was not close. USC won by double digits. Florida State, or not Florida State, Washington State. I don't know why I said Florida State. That was a weird Freudian slip. Washington State, slow start, but again, won the game comfortably by the end of it. Cal, again, a slow start, a little kind of. The weather was bad, and Oregon won the game by 40 points. And and then there was, you know, the the rest of the games, you just kind of go through in your head, and you're like, yeah, no, there weren't that many close games. Yeah, because Oregon was really good. I mean, Utah, for instance, college game day, 35-6. to six. So, yeah, Oregon was very, very close to doing it a year ago. So I look at this schedule, and I think back to last year's schedule, And at the very least, they're on the same level. I could make the case this schedule is more favorable than last year's schedule because the two toughest road games Oregon had to play a year ago were uh, at the time 6-1 and and 13th ranked Utah. They had to go to a place where the Utes had not lost since 2018 with fans in the stands. And they had to go to Washington where they were an underdog. Oregon's going to be favored in every single game that they play this year except for Ohio State. And barring drastic changes to Michigan, which I don't suspect, Oregon Open is a three and a half point favorite, according to our friends over at FanDuel. And every other game, Oregon is going to be a favorite. And then the one game where they're an underdog, where they're, you know, around plus one or so, the game is close to a pick 'em. Because you can look at this sports book and see a line. You can see that sports book and see a line. And they can have those teams on different side of things, that being Oregon and Ohio State. I happen to think Oregon is going to win that game against Ohio State. I haven't made my official prediction just yet because August is for predictions. And gosh, I can't wait for prediction season because then you watch it all play out. And then I find out whether I'm smart or and sharp or incredibly, incredibly dull like a rusty butter knife. Well, if it has rust on it, then it might be kind of... 
might have some sharp elements to it. But you get the point that, that I'm making a plastic butter knife. How about that? So I'm, I'm, I'm most excited for, for, all, for all of that because the season is indeed so remarkably close. But last year's schedule at Texas Tech is singularly tougher than any non-conference game Oregon is playing this year. Boise State is the toughest non-conference game that Oregon has. They're the preseason Mountain West favorites. They are absolutely capable of getting the group of five automatic bid to the college football playoff, which I think is a ridiculous premise. I think all auto bids for any conference anywhere are absurd, on their face, really dumb. The same logic that was used to remove divisions from college football conferences. Logic I agree with, by the way, it's just not applied to the playoff. And we say, yeah, you get an auto bid. What if you're in a weaker conference? Yeah, that doesn't matter. You're gonna get an auto bid anyway. It's all ridiculous and absurd, but so are many things in college football. So are there trap games on the schedule? Yeah, yeah, there, there absolutely can be. But do I feel as, you know, I was talking last week, or not last week, yesterday on on, uh, on on Monday show about the schedule and kind of the other games, you know, aside from the, the headliners, which are Ohio, excuse me, Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Washington. I think those are Oregon's four hardest games in that order. If you look at the rest of the Big Ten conference slate, there's no one on there that terrifies me. I, I mean, Purdue on the road on a Friday night, that has my attention. It doesn't worry me per se. Oregon State's a rivalry game. They've been relegated essentially to the Mountain West, which I think is wrong and dumb for many reasons. They're going to be extra motivated. You know their fans are going to bring it. I just don't think they're going to have the team to be able to keep up with Oregon because the Ducks are a national title contender and the Beavs are probably, you know, if you look at what their win total says on FanDuel or what I, I think they're capable of being given their offseason, they're... They're a solid Mountain West capable team. Like if they were actually a member of the Mountain West, they would probably be, you know, close to a, a nine win team. They'll still probably be close to a nine win, nine win team. I think they probably end up at eight and four, nine and three. That'd be my guess. But that's a little bit of an un unknown there. So the, the schedule just works out in a way that gives Oregon a lot of breaks. Having Ohio State at home and Michigan on the road is a huge flip. If you're going to have those two teams on your schedule in the Big Ten, that is that is the more beneficial way to have them. The odds you can get both at home or have both on the road, I don't know how common that is. I'm not super experienced, of course, in looking at Big Ten schedules every single year. But having Ohio State, it, like if you had to ask me, who would you want to have on the road? Who do you want to have at home? Regardless of the time of year. I know Ann Arbor in November, it's going to be cold and playing to what Sharon Moore's Michigan teams are going to want to do to, to, win, to win football games, which is play smash mouth football and just beat with physicality in the run game and such. I would still rather go to Ann Arbor any time of year than go to Columbus when the weather is is perfect, like Oregon did back in September of 2021. So I think that's a major break. I think having a bye before the Washington game avoids the look ahead factor when they go play Wisconsin on November 16th. That's certainly going to be a tricky game. And, you know, I, I've said before and continue to think that's probably the biggest trap game on on Oregon's radar if it's flying under anybody's radar. I don't know how you all feel about Wisconsin, but it's a respectable program. They should be a bowl team. And anytime you have a team that is going to win at least six games in a given season and you have to go to their place, I've seen crazier things happen. I've watched college football for a long time. I know many of you have as well. Crazy things can happen in there. But Oregon's going to have the better roster in every game except for Ohio State. And they're going to have the better quarterback in every game. That's the, that's the statement I feel most confident saying. I think the roster question, you know, you could look at Ohio State, say maybe they've got more high-end defensive players. Probably true. Oregon might have more high-end offensive players, though. It could come out to be a wash. It's kind of what the betting line looks like is it's, you know, really close to a pick -em. Granted, the game is being played in Eugene. So if it were in Columbus, Ohio State would probably be a small favorite. But Dylan Gabriel, to me, in 2024 – is a much more known commodity and gives me a high floor of production that is greater than any quarterback Oregon's going to face this year. Aiden Childs, one day, could be a Heisman Trophy caliber player. He's not going to be in his first year as, as a starting quarterback. That's asking a lot. That's asking a lot, even for a guy who has some mild experience playing 
in you know in times where the game is still in doubt, which is what he did last year at at Oregon State with DJ. So I like where the schedule is at. I think twelve and zero is completely realistic. Am I predicting that? Haven't made my predictions yet. Just saying, the more I think about it, the more it seems to line up for that to be in play. And when you think about how tough Oregon's schedule was last year, playing in a really deep Pac-12, and how close they came, how dominant they looked, and how close they came to going undefeated with that schedule, I think they can absolutely do it in the Big Ten. You might have a couple tougher teams at the top, but the middle and bottom of the Big Ten, I don't know if this is the worst kept secret or what, it's really not that good. It's... It's just okay. Like the Big Ten is great because Michigan and Ohio State and Penn State have been great every single year. Those are top 10 teams and programs every single year. That's why the Big Ten's great. When you look in the top 25 rankings throughout the year over the last several seasons, from the 10 to 25 range, there haven't been a lot of Big Ten teams popping in and out. I mean, Wisconsin has, you know, hired a new coach in the last couple of years because. They weren't what they are, are, are capable of being. And Minnesota and P.J. Fleck, yeah, they kind of rose up, and then they rose back down. And nobody else has really captured that mantle of being a high-level, top-25 caliber, Tier 2 Big Ten team. I think there are a number of schools that can do it. I think two of them in the coming years are going to be the former Pac-12 schools in Washington and, and USC. So that's why Oregon can absolutely go 12-0 and this year.